In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise you for this beautiful day, Lord. We thank you for everything that you have given us. We thank you for loving us, Lord. We thank you for giving Jesus to us. We don't know what we would have done if it was not for your plan, if it was not for you who was leading us. All we like sheep have gone on our own ways. But it's because of your compassion that you are leading us, Lord. Holy Spirit, take complete authority of this entire session. Take complete authority of my mind and my vocal cords. You think through my mind, you speak through my mouth. Let every word that is spoken over here pierce the hearts of those who are listening. And I bind every spirit of distraction, disturbance and unbelief that has come to steal, kill and destroy. In the name of Jesus, I command you leave this place right now. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for I know and I know that you're going to confirm every word spoken over here with accompanying signs, wonders and testimonies. We make this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Okay. So let's go to John chapter 5, 15 verse 5. Let's learn something interesting. Okay. Can someone please read? I am the sprouting vine and you are my branches. As you live in union with me as your source, fruitfulness will stream from within you. But when you live separated from me, you are powerless. Praise, Praise God. God. So this is the uh, this is the teaching on the true vine. Now we all know that Jesus would teach his disciples. And Jesus' classroom teaching was not like a classroom teaching. It was very practical. Sometimes Jesus was, you know, by the lake side. The other times he was by the, you know, by the mountain. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. So sometimes he was by the mountains top. Sometimes he was by the lake shore. Sometimes he was traveling. So around then, there was a lot of nature. So beginning to understand that, you know, you get your examples as you travel. When you begin to notice a lot of things, you draw out your examples from there. You begin to observe things. Like, uh, you know, when I had gone out recently, for a retreat and uh, that was in a place of a lot of nature so we were observing a lot of things around you know which we normally don't and that gave me an understanding of how Jesus would normally you know uh, see things around him so I, I'm pretty sure as they were passing by there must have been a vineyard vineyard where there was a lot of wine and you know from there a lot of the wine having branches bearing the grapefruit. And looking at that, Jesus began to teach them. And he's saying, I am the sprouting wine and you are my branches. As you live in union with me as your source, fruitfulness will stream from within you. So when you see the wine, okay, the vine has its branches. For that matter, any tree has its branches. But without the branch, is it getting connected? You know, is the branch uh, able to bear fruit? No. Not at all? No. No. 
only when the branch is connected it's able to bear fruit so in our life too okay when we are born again we experience the lord okay and thank you jesus yeah and that's the time um, we begin to understand that okay we are called to bear fruit but do you think bearing fruit is easy no. not at all it's not easy when the pressure comes when the situation is you know not in your favor bearing fruit is not at all easy but jesus doesn't expect you and me to bear fruit on our own that's where we fail that's where we go on our performance you know you and i are to live in union with jesus as our source we have to be connected to him every moment of our life what happens when i get disconnected from him that's when i lose the direction of my life that's where i begin to drift away because we can start sincerely we can start genuinely in faith but what happens you know after a point when you start uh, you know seeing results then the focus shifts from god onto your own performance have you all experienced this yes sister yes because you know when we didn't know anything okay i'm talking about myself okay when i was new to the word and i didn't know all these things i was not preaching 40 minutes one hour and all these things when i started with the lord i would barely um, you know speak for 5 minutes or few minutes like you know 5 minutes 10 minutes and how i was sharing the word also i will tell you i would make voice notes okay i would record the small small teachings and i would share it and what i saw in that small sharing also the holy spirit used it to touch so many people and what i understand from that is you know relationship with god is not a formula it is just being sensitive to the voice of the holy spirit okay it's not like a timetable a routine it was never supposed to be that way if we see jesus's life was it a routine no <laughs> no it was not a routine like how we have a routine in our life they didn't even know where they were going most of the times only jesus knew and the disciples followed him sometimes he would cross the boat to the other side sometimes he would go to the mountain sometimes he would go to different cities from galilee he would go to samaria and so many things no they schedule. didn't have a yeah there was no schedule exactly and sometimes jesus would leave them and you know go alone to be with his father so what i understand from jesus's life is he never had a timetable like you and i have a timetable in our life right he never had a timetable and that's why you know the work of the holy spirit was so powerful at the time of jesus and even during the time of the early church because they never saw the time never saw okay this is uh, it is morning time it is evening time and that's where you know it gave me a realization that how um, you know we are limiting many a times we limit the holy spirit because we make it like a schedule we make it like okay it has to be this way it has to be that way you know we go on planning and planning and planning and that's where you know i have realized one thing that it's all about being dependent on the holy spirit am i willing to depend on the holy spirit am i willing to just sit here surrendering my vocal cords completely to him saying lord i don't know i don't know where to go which direction to go lead me lord because if that is how i go that is when you i can 
really experience the Holy Spirit, using that to touch people's lives. Because many a times what happens is we get so carried away with sharing the gospel. I'm not saying we should not share. We have to share the word. We have to, you know, um, share the teachings to everybody around us. But many a times our focus shifts from spending time with the Lord alone to doing things for him. And when that happens, we start drifting away. And when we start drifting away, it is not depending on the Holy Spirit. Rather, it is depending on my performance. And how do I know if I'm really, you know, under grace or I'm under performance? The symptoms of performance is very evident. You'll get tired. You'll get burnt out. And the days you are not able to, uh, you know, perform, you will feel guilty. You'll go into condemnation, a shell. You know, you'll feel I'm not doing enough. I'm trying, I'm trying. I'm doing so many things, but it is not working. I'm doing this thing, but I'm still getting irritated. No, that's not how it should be. The reason it is happening that way is because you and I are not depending on the Holy Spirit. We are not giving him a chance to work in us. And we are trying to bear fruit on our own. And that is why when I'm cut off from the union, from Christ being my source, to me being my source, that is when no fruit will come. And even if I try to bear fruit, it is with great difficulty. It is a struggle. It becomes like, a, you know, okay, I have to do performance kinds, kind of a thing. But it was never meant to be that way. It was never meant to be that way. The most important thing, okay, in a Christian's life is his union with God. Just you need to be connected to Jesus. And most of the times, it is when you spend alone time with the Lord, that is where in that alone time, you're giving Holy Spirit an opportunity to work on you. There are different areas of our life where each one of us is weak. And we, we most of the times, we don't even know we are struggling. Okay, like so many times it happens. But when you sit alone with the Lord, okay, spending time with him in the presence of God, that is where, you know, he reveals to you. He reveals to you his plan for your life. He reveals to you what you should do. He reveals to you the areas in your life where you are still work in progress where you still need to be pruned so that together with the Holy Spirit, you can bear fruit. Me preaching the gospel has should never be a, you know, a single person. When I say that, I should never go and preach thinking that I have to convince people. No. It's not my job to convince anybody. It is Holy Spirit who will help them to understand, who will teach them. My job is to preach what the Holy Spirit tells me. And that's when, you know, you see the glory of God as you are connected with Jesus. Fruitfulness will stream from within you. But when you se live separated from Jesus, that is when you become powerless. And that's why even though you're seeing the scriptures, even though you're seeing the verses, everything, but not having a relationship is the reason. The lack of intimacy, lack of relationship is the reason why a believer can experience powerlessness. Would anyone like to add something to what we are studying? Recently, I had an experience. Recently, I had an experience 
we were, two of us were trying to convince a lady who was going in depression, but she seems to be not um, cooperating. And her people at home also were uh, asking her to refrain from getting connected with us. And so we decided to, and even Dr. Uh, even um, Brother Johnson spoke to her and gave her uh, homework to do. And she called me and she said, uh, I'm not able to do like, you know, she's just uh, drowsy, whatever. And then she said, I don't know, I can't write, I can't share, I can't, she went on. So we decided, the two of us, uh, the other warrior and myself, that we'll only start praying for her, interceding for her, and let the Holy Spirit move in her life and touch her. That's how, because we were also doing so, we have seen cases, instant, uh, you know, result of manifestation, but in her case, it's become so difficult. That the case that I think that you know about it. And so I don't know how to go. We have only decided to pray for her. Praise God. Yes, that's exactly what God wants us to do. Because he says, right, in the kingdom of God, a farmer or a sower plants the seed and he does not know how the seed grows. That means every soil, the soil represents our heart condition, right? And many a times we get people in, who are in different kinds of soils in our life. So when we are planting the seed, many a times the soil is not ready to receive that seed. It's not in a, a condition where, you know, it's ready to accept it because before the seed is planted on the soil, it has to be plowed. It has to be made ready to receive it. But many a times that is not the right time. But whatever seed you plant in faith, the moment you say, Lord, I have done my job. Now it is, I surrender this person to you. That seed will never go in vain. There are so many times, you know, sister, I have planted the seed in faith long back, maybe like two years before. And when I planted it, I, it felt like, you know, nothing is happening. Okay. When I shared the word in some people's life, it felt like nothing is happening. But after two years, I was never connected to them. But I see there is, you know, things are changing. So it is the Lord who is at work in their lives. It is he who is making, he who, he's, who is giving the desire. Today, if you and I are here in this class, okay, leaving aside other things, it is only because of the desire that God has put in our heart so that we know more and more of the word, right? And that's exactly what I need to understand. That in my journey with the Lord, I should never ever allow anything to come in between me and God. Not even ministry. Not even doing things for the Lord. And your relationship with the Lord, it is not a formula. You know, um, I used to in the past listen to, you know, people's experiences. And I used to try to idealize that in my life. Okay, if they are doing this, I should also do this. But over a period of time, Holy Spirit convicted me and said, relationship is not a formula. Yes, you can read the testimonies of people who are in the word, you know, who are doing things for the Lord. It can encourage you, but that should not be the foundation of your relationship with God. The foundation of your relationship with God should be based on the written word. It should be based on what God has done for you your own testimony, you know, and with the word that will help you. So there are two things. One thing is I should know the word of God. Okay. And the other thing is I should have a relationship with the Lord. Both are important. If I'm going to say I'm only going to study the scriptures, but I'm not going to, you know, have a relationship with the Holy Spirit then it's going on legalism. Then I'm going on an extreme where, you know, I'm studying the scriptures. I'm becoming like a Pharisee, not being dependent on the Holy Spirit, going on performance mindset. Whereas if I'm only going to have a relationship with Holy Spirit, but I'm not going to study the word, then I'm again going on emotions, you know, it's like um, both are required 
to go hand in hand it's simply about being sensitive to the voice of the holy spirit praise god thank you jesus praise god thank you jesus so as we were learning in john chapter 15 verse 5 how important it is to be you know connected to the true vine jesus and what happens when a person is not connected to christ there is a verse in galatians chapter 5 verse 4 so let's go there okay i'll put this in message translation okay thank you holy spirit okay. would someone like to read this i suspect you i suspect you would never intend this but this is what happens when you attempt to live by your own religious plans and projects you are cut off from christ you fall out of grace when while we expectantly wait for a satisfying relationship with the spirit for in christ neither a most conscientious religion nor disregard of religion amounts to anything what matters is something far more interior faith expressed in love praise god this is a beautiful verse galatians 5 verse 4 to 6 onwards okay we are going to study on this so he, paul is saying okay i suspect you would never intend this okay but this is what happens when a person you know might start out very innocently in faith but slowly his focus starts shifting from you know the what he his relationship with the lord to what he's doing his performance and that's why he's saying i suspect you would never intend this but this is what happens that is when you attempt to live by your own religious plans and projects that means you keep on planning i have to do this i have to go here i have to do there and those things see those doing things for the lord doing the ministry work is not wrong we should do it jesus has commanded us but we should do it with him not depending on our own self but depending on the holy spirit and what happens when a person attempts to live by his own plans he is cut off from christ and he falls out of grace when a person is disconnected from christ he is not able to receive grace he falls from grace it's not that grace is taken away from him but rather he he is not able to access that grace why because he has shifted he has drifted away are you all understanding yes sir and when grace yes. is not you know you're not working under grace then it is it becomes a torment it becomes a bondage you get irritated i have experienced these many a times you know in my life and that's why he's saying meanwhile we expectantly wait for a satisfying relationship with the spirit because that is very important at any point in time your relationship with the lord is extremely important don't don't let anything replace that for in christ neither are most conscientious religion nor disregard of religion amounts to anything okay so what this means is as i was saying in yesterday's class okay they were at a time where you know they were following these practices of circumcision circumcision was given as a command by god to abraham it was a sign of a covenant okay where the male born at on the eighth day would be circumcised okay in the jewish tradition so when he is saying that uh, you know religion he is talking about those practices okay those certain commands from the old covenant but 
after christ came paul is saying these things don't matter whether you circumcise you don't circumcise that means you know the gentiles were living uh, uh, they did not have these rules what the jews were following and the jews had one thing that okay if you want to be accepted by us you have to follow those traditions but what paul is saying according to the scripture is once you are in christ these traditions don't matter these religious practices don't matter only one thing matters and that is faith expressed in love okay and this is not my love but god's love for me and when i understand god's love for me that is exactly when i am able to you know walk in love i am able to bear the fruit that jesus is calling you and me to bear praise god yeah thank you jesus thank you jesus anybody wants to ask anything or add anything uh, yes we i just wanted to ask you now the muslims also uh, have this circumcision uh, you know yeah. so yeah. are you following the jewish customs or how did that you know okay i'm not very sure about this sister yeah, but uh, what i have uh, 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 what i've heard is yeah. that you know when abraham had two sons Right. Ishmael okay. and Isaac, right? Correct. So the descendants of Ishmael are still following the yes. old culture. So okay. I think they are also following the same thing. But I'm not very sure about it. So mm. I I just thought I'll share what I know. Okay. okay. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Praise God. Anybody else would like to add something? anybody experienced self performance you know how it was leading you to burn out and stress thank you jesus okay so this is all i have for today's class that is abiding in jesus who is our true vine and the more time i spend with him that is where he will help me to overcome those weak areas in my life and with that i will be able to bear fruit okay that's what it is thank you jesus so if anyone does there's nothing more than we can close for today and we can continue tomorrow would anyone like to make the closing prayer yes sister i'll make it <clears throat> yes sister go ahead abba father we thank you for this day lord thank you for the gift of life lord thank you for this beautiful day that you've shown us lord we give thanks to you lord it says lord Oh, give thanks to the Lord for He is good, for His mercy endures forever. Thank you, Jesus, for this beautiful and lovely day that You've shown us, Lord. We pray that You will take us through this day, and whatever we need to do, and wherever we need to go, Lord, You will be with us, and You will show us and help us to depend on You and You alone to be our guide, our strength, our everything, Lord, Father God. We thank you for this time that you've given us to come and sit at your feet and listen to your word, Lord, this morning before we start our day, Lord. Father, we thank you for your blessings, Lord, your countless blessings, Lord, which you shower upon us daily, Lord, which we cannot see, but we know it is there because we are living each day, breathing, listening, watching, seeing, with all the the different. Uh, Uh, the different uh, things that you've provided us with, Lord, with our senses, Lord, our five senses. That is what we want to thank you for, Lord. Thank you and praise you, Lord. We bless uh, Sister Priya who br- brings this teaching to us day in and day out, Lord. Thank you that the Holy Spirit is guiding her, leading her, 
and helping her through her work also lord and her walk with you lord father we bless we pray for each and every one for their intentions their their needs lord that you will provide every need that they are seeking lord we thank you that they will first seek the kingdom of god and his righteousness and everything else will be added to all of us lord we give you the glory the honor the praise in jesus name i pray amen amen and amen amen thank you sister for this beautiful prayer thank you yes. all for joining in see you all thank tomorrow you. bye, bye. bye. Yes, God bless. Bye-bye.